All right, so I'm gonna go over the two examples on the left and your questions are on the right. So the first ones are about factoring out the greatest common factor. That's what GCF stands for. So you're looking at both of these and thinking, what can I pull out of each of those terms? What could I divide each of those terms by? So I like to first look at just the regular numbers, 12 and nine. And I know I can divide both 12 and nine by three. And then I go to the next variable, x to the third, and here there's x to the second power. So what is the most number of x's that they both have? They both have at least one, but they both have at least two. So I can pull out x squared from both of those. And then y's, this one has a y, but the other one doesn't. So I can't factor, they don't have a y in common. They have to be common factors of both. So both of these terms I can divide by 3x squared. So that's what goes on the outside of the parentheses and what's on the inside of the parentheses is what is left when you divide it by 3x squared. So if I look at the first one here, if I divide 12 by 3, I get 4. If I divide x to the third by x squared, there's 1x left. Now let's do this one. It, I divide positive nine by three, I get three. Y, there's no Y, so that has to stay. And X squared divided by X squared cancels out. So this is what I have. If you would like to double check your answer, you can always multiply it and make sure that it turns out to be that original problem. That's what factoring is, is changing it to a multiplication problem. So if we multiply, three times four is 12, x squared times x is x to the third. And then if you multiply this, three times three is nine. I have a y and I have an x squared. So that checks out. Um, so there you go. That's factoring out the greatest common factor. Now, the next one is factoring by grouping. So if you happen to notice that you could maybe group these together and group these together, and there's a greatest common factor you can pull out of each of those groups, that's what you should do. So um, like I notice all of them have, have X's, um, but not the last one. So I can't factor a 10 out of all of them. Um, so that's why you kind of look at chunks of it and see if you can factor those. So if we look at this and look at these two terms, I see they both have an x. Actually, they both have at least two x's. So I'm going to say x squared. And then this one has a 2, but there's no number here. So the only thing I can factor out of both of these is an x squared. And when I do, when I factor x squared out of this one, I just have an x left. And when I factor an x squared out of this one, I have a minus two. And again, you can always double check yourself. x squared times x is x to the third. x squared times negative two is negative two x squared. So I factored it right. I just turned it into a multiplication problem. And then you go to the next one. And you say, what can I factor out of both of these? I have a five and a 10. I can, I can divide those both by five, a positive five. And when I do, um, and this one has an X, but this one doesn't. So the only thing I can divide both of them by is five. And then when I do, what is left? When I divide the first term by five, I'm left with an X. When I divide this term by five, I'm left with a minus two. So this is what factoring by grouping does. Now you look at what is left and you say, can I factor something out of both of these terms? Is there something that this one has that this one has? And notice they both have the X minus two. So I can pull an X minus two out of this term and an X minus two out of this term. So if I take an X minus two out of each one, if I divide this by X minus two, 
I'm left with x squared. If I divide this by x minus 2, I'm left with a plus 5. So this now is a fully factored uh, polynomial.